Alexis is doing fantastic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She loves to learn. She loves to read. We just love hanging out with her, and it's so fun. <gasps> At 18 months, to see her discover things. Boink. She is a true fighter. It was February 18th. She was just about to turn eight months old, and it was actually on her eight month birthday that we first took her to the emergency room. We just knew she was kind of getting slowly sicker and sicker, and we couldn't quite figure out what it was. We didn't know at the time, you know, is she just had the flu or what's going on? They did a swab, came back positive for RSV, so uh, they admitted us, just said, you know, probably be a couple days, start an IV, give her some fluids, and you know, you guys will be out the door in no time. She had a bad uh, respiratory illness with RSV, but in a small child, it can be a devastating illness, and in a child that's more susceptible, it can be even more devastating. You know, scary news, but we felt good, you know, with being at the hospital and knowing there was people around to kind of help with this. But on probably our third day there, she started to get really puffy, and they basically said, we've determined that your child has right side heart failure. You know, we need to get her down to the PICU. We're working on getting her a room right now. She's stable, but kids with this extreme right side heart failure tend to, when things go bad, they go bad fast. So we just want her in the safest place where everything's there if we need to go to that next step. I first met Alexis when she was transferred to the pediatric intensive care unit, the PICU, from the general floors. It was noticed on an echocardiogram that there were concerns for pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension is a condition in which the blood pressure in the lungs is much higher than normal. It's hard for the heart to pump blood through the lungs when the pressure in the lungs is so high. We were very scared for Alexis and just trying to understand kind of what the next steps were. Everything was going fine, you know, they had her on oxygen and uh, the doctors were saying everything was going smooth. You guys just go home, get a good night's sleep. Um, we'll call you if anything happens. And that's when we got the phone call at four in the morning that. That she went into cardiac arrest. The minute we went into the door, Dr. Trumper was actually leaving her room and caught us and said, everything's going good. We started a central line. We had to do CPR for a little bit, but her brain wasn't without oxygen, so it was just time to intubate her, get her more stabilized, and allow her, her body to heal from the RSV. They decided at that point to start a medicine for pulmonary hypertension, so we're thinking, okay, we're all right, and then 12 hours later, she's crashed again. It's a very humbling experience to know that you can't hold, help your child and you have to trust your child to the hands of someone else. Because Alexis was so sick, we had to put her on ECMO, which is extracorporeal membranous oxygenation, and essentially that amounts to heart and lung bypass. So we were doing all the work of both her heart and her lungs at that time. She was very sick and ECMO is a very serious thing. and. There, there wasn't a procedure that could be done. It wasn't like, oh, we can do this procedure and then she'll be better. It won't heal Alexis. It won't save her from anything. All it's gonna do is allow her body to heal and take the stress out of pumping the blood and oxygenating the blood. She was an incredibly sick little girl. After we got her on the ECMO support, we realized that her degree of pulmonary hypertension seemed disproportionate to just her RSV alone, and we frankly searched out other causes as to why she had pulmonary hypertension so severe. We ultimately have settled on her being what we call idiopathic, meaning we're, we don't know the cause of that, but she has uh, continued to improve since the, the hospitalization. All better. There were several things that fixed her. First of all, the ECMO kept her alive. The medication that we put in her pulmonary arteries was very important. Time was very important. Giving her time to resolve some of the inflammation from the RSV, it has been amazing. It's, uh, I think, a testament to the whole team, a testament to the parents. They're, they're awesome. They, they do a great job with her. We had multiple days where the doctors and the nurses were, you know, you have the sickest kid in the hospital, and now, you wouldn't 
you wouldn't believe that she was at the place she was, and it was solely based on children's and the care she got there. Itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. She really has come impressively far, and especially to be able to go home and thrive and be an active, you know, is amazing. Oh, that's too big. Birthdays, 4th of July, Christmas. There's just so many people I think about because like their work is allowing us to have that holiday together. Zebra. Children's will always be near and dear to my wife and I for what they've done for Alexis and what they've done for our family. What can you say to someone that gave you your life back? Because that's what Alexis is for my wife and I. She's our life. Flat, flat. Children's allowed us to take Alexis back home. I would just like to say thank you to everyone that had um, a hand in Alexis's care, whether it be directly or indirectly. Everyone had great ideas of how to help Alexis heal and get stronger. And can you warm a kiss? There's just nothing that we can say to um, say thanks enough. Yay! Good job. Yay! <laughs>